Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody has a great start to the weekend. Hopefully everybody had a good uh, trading week. So here's the headlines, right? Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is usually not something that I would lead off with, but it was significant, so we're gonna talk about it. So the Dow closes the lowest level of 2022, right? Um, and again, I, I think majority of people, when they talk about the stock market, at least from the Main Street point of view, they talk about the stock market as the Dow Jones Industrialist. We don't, right? I don't think any trader will look at 30 stocks and say, well, this is the, uh, this is the sum of the, you know, this is the whole part of the market. It's only 30 stocks, right? The, if, when you look at the S&P 500 and you look at the NASDAQ 100 and you look at the Russell, you'll get a pretty much more macro picture of what's going on. But the fact that oil plunges, uh, oil prices are plunging, that's why you're seeing a lot of the oil names uh, getting smacked today. Uh, we are getting right back to the area where we all kind of started from. The recession fears have come back. Well, when the hell will they leave, right? As far as I understand, they never left. So. Is that an important thing? Look, it's not a great thing for the bulls, right? I don't think it's a it's a wonderful thing to talk about over the weekend. Hey, how great it is to be at 2022 lows, but it's not the end of the world yet, right? When you look at the NASDAQ 100, or at least the Qs, we're not that far off. We're a little bit away. We're still about six points away uh, from the 22 lows. And when you look at the SPIs or the S&P 500, we are, let's see here, the lows were, the June lows were 362. We're at 367, so we're five points away. So the market is not great for the longer term trader, for the investor, uh, for anybody who speculates in any uh, speculation asset class. That definitely includes the equities market. That definitely includes uh, the crypto market, the Bitcoin space and everything else in between. And now that we are going into kind of the fall, right? It's going into the kind of the fourth quarter towards the end of the year, investors and traders are trying to figure out what's next and i i think and i've been and i've been saying this for a very very long time it's very very tough uh to try to predict the market right um i've never been one to have an opinion of what's going to happen more than a 24-hour period at a time because again there's so many things that you have to take into consideration this is a headline driven market as we saw this week the fed was all over the place right you had the interest rate uh statement on wednesday and apparently powell gets you know paid by the word something dra dramatically had to change from wednesday's economy into today so he spoke again so i i, I really get the feeling that he is getting paid uh by the word so we're, we're in a you know we're in a bubble of uh fed we're in a bubble of uh all these different headlines russia still out there uh covid's making a little bit of an appearance depending where you live uh it's kind of a little bit of spike going to the fall season and the stock market is just not behaving matter of fact if you look at the cues and we've been kind of talking about this uh for a while now again below the 50 day is bad above the 50 day and we were here above the 50 day is good and that's kind of the most basic element of being a trader and what what really stood out this week was the the orderly aggression for the exception of wednesday that was that violent day uh with the fed the orderly aggression continued to be to the downside and that's kind of where you know we, we try to position every single day if you uh, watch the videos uh, every single day. Again, we're, I'm, I'm speaking from a non-biased point of view. I, I, again, for me, it doesn't make a difference uh, which way the market's being traded. As long as there's a trade, as long as there is a theme, and as long as there's a trend, that's the most important part. And what we saw today to kind of finish off the week, uh, the Qs closed, um, well, the Qs, the NASDAQ 100, uh, closed down 5%. That's back-to-back -back week. So you're talking about a 10% decline uh, in the in the Nasdaq 100 just in the last two weeks, it's not a really a good thing. So, how do you position this thing if you're if you're uh, if you're an investor? Well, the first thing, and again, it's not one of those things going back in time uh, to kind of uh, fix things. But again, you, you could have. That's the most important. You could have been prepared for this. Uh, any single time you drift below the 50-day moving average, and I and I talk to traders all the time, they finally started. You know, they finally started to kind of get their house in order to kind of not to get any surprises because it is that significant. So, for anybody who tells you. 
technical analysis is not important. Well, it is important. It was important. It continues to be important. It kind of puts you in a situation that you don't have to guess. I, I Again, I, I am probably the worst guesser of all time. I have no idea where the market's going to be, you know, the next day, the, week, the day after that, three weeks from now. I don't know. We're not, you know, paid to guess. We're paid to collect data. And that's exactly what we did. And when you look at a 10% decline in the NASDAQ, uh, in the NASDAQ 100 over the two weeks, even the most aggressive bear, right, can turn around and go, ah, that's a little bit too much, too fast, 10% in two weeks. At some point, the market has to rally. And they're not wrong, right? They're absolutely not wrong. And if you are a bull and you're just randomly picking bottoms, you're hoping for that sequence to happen. But here's kind of where we are going into the next, next week, okay? I don't think any anything fundamentally is going to change, Be, meaning the, the Fed is not gonna come out uh, over the weekend uh, and give you some sort of white knight approach that everything is gonna be okay. I don't think there's going to be a headline over the weekend that, hey, things are getting worse. You know, we're probably pretty much in a crappy area to begin with. So I don't think it's gonna be a news-driven uh, kind of a scenario to start off the week. What I do believe is gonna put in a situation Monday or Tuesday that I do believe there's going to be some sort of washout. If we were only down like three, four percent going into next week, I'd be like, listen, there's no, there's no reason for the market should ever rally. I'm obviously joking, uh, but the point is, you know, when you have a 10% move in two weeks, there should be some sort of relief rally, right? And the only way a relief rally comes is in the way of when we and again, if you've been watching this broadcast for a long time, especially during the bear bear market cycle, you kind of know you need a washout, right? I don't want to use the word capitulation. Nobody's capitulating, right? You know, most day traders are not capitulating. Most investors, you know, if you're in, you know, if you're in the stock market for a five, 10 year horizon, you're not capitulating. But there's certain people are. I don't think we're at the capitulation stage yet because again, I don't think we're at the lows yet, or at least for the NASDAQ 100 and, and, and for the spies, for the Dow, yes. So if there is going to be some sort of relief, I don't want to use the word rally because we're far from a rally, right? I think we have to change that word. But if there's going to be any type of scenario that the market at least shakes off some lows, right? Especially a 10% decline in two weeks, it's going to be a scenario with aggressive overnight futures at the lows, right? Um, for, for us to rally Monday or Tuesday, the last thing the bulls want to do, and, and I say this every single time because this is reality, the last thing the bulls want to do is have a gap up, okay? Because that gap up will get stuffed 99% out of 100 times, and we've seen that over and over and over again, right? Stocks are going to get trapped into supply, they're going to roll over, and they're going to start taking down the previous day's ranges. That's exactly what we saw uh, the couple last couple of days that we saw even saw today on opening range low. So you don't want to be a buyer into strength. What you want to see, as, especially as a trader, I don't want to talk from, from the investment point of view, if you if we are going to have a reversal any any time this week monday tuesday wednesday whatever it is right we're going to need the dow to open down five six hundred points the nasdaq to open down 300 points if there is some sort of scenario of hey throw the baby out with the bathwater. i don't want to be in the stock market i don't want to be invested the market's going to zero market's not going to zero and i don't want, i want to be out of this market i want to sell all my stocks at once and get the hell out of dodge right if that is the scenario then yes i do believe we will probably get a situation that if we do gap down five six hundred points on the Dow, two, 300 points on the NASDAQ. At some point during that day, if there's going to be reversal, well, hell, that is the perfect example of a reversal. And then you don't have to think, right? You don't have to look at charts. You don't have to look at anything. Anything that goes red to green after uh, a washout, throw the baby out with the bathwater scenario, just buy it, right? Just buy it. I mean, what are you thinking about, right? There's certain times you have to be very methodical. You have to be very, very organized, but not when you have a capitulation, capitulation move, uh, at the open uh, and everything is reversing, you're literally closing your eyes, hoping for the best, and hopefully the market will have a, one of those days that they're up three, four, five percent. That's kind of what it is. Does that mean, is that the bottom? No, it doesn't mean that's the bottom. It just means that bear cycles have very, very aggressive rallies at some point of the day. Again, all you need to do is just look at after this selling, right? We had th three, four days of buying, uh, three, four days of buying. There's always upside, right? There's always some upside, uh, especially in this new market that no matter how bad the market gets, they're always going to give you some quote unquote washout reversals that last for two, three, maybe even four days. And that's kind of the plan. So that's kind of what I want to see uh, going into Monday's session. So if you see the futures down, 
you know, Sunday night, you know, 500 handfuls uh, handles, that'll probably be, you know, the bull's best bet for a reversal the next day. And if that could happen, hey, maybe we could get a two, three, four uh, day uh, tradable rally. We'll see. We'll see. But the last thing, again, the last thing you want to do if you're a bull is see those futures green overnight at the cash open and spill over into the next day. Because again, what's gonna happen is again, like I said a couple of minutes ago, things will get, right? Things will get stuffed at supply and they're gonna roll over and start taking out the previous day's range. So that's kind of what it is. Uh, you're seeing a lot of stocks also, um, you know, down two, three, four weeks. And this is kind of where I'm getting starting to kind of gather my opinion about this, right? You're seeing so many names that it's so far down off their uh, 50 day moving average. I look at, look at, you know, Microsoft, Microsoft took out the 50 day moving average on August the 26th. This was a month ago. Look at the, look at the destruction of this thing, right? Look at the destruction, for example, on Google, right? You know, Google, again, look, look at Google. You know, you're talking about from 113, uh, from 113, talking about a 14, 15% move in Google in, in about, you know, about a month. It's a lot, right? Amazon as well. I mean, you could go down the road, but you could see that the destruction in prices just off the last several weeks. And the most important part is, and this is kind of where I reiterate this point, especially in the webinar, that when you're taking a pivot, whether it's long or short, you want to make sure it is super, super tight, okay, to the range. Because the further it goes away from the pivot, right, the further it goes. So, for example, if a stock breaks down, uh, if the stock loses the 50-day moving average at 126, the pivot is 126. It's not 118. It's not 114. It's not 116 right? It's at 126. If you miss the pivot, you miss the pivot. But the further you go away from the pivot, the higher probability you're going to have a chance that it reverses on you. So price does matter. Entry does matter. And we're starting to see a lot of stocks, right? Really, really a lot of stocks super away from their pivot. And that's a very, very important point. Plus you add to the point that, hey, you know, we have a scenario of we were down 10% in two weeks. So I do think there is going to be some sort of dead cat bounce uh, this week. If not, I don't know what the hell to tell you, Permabulls, right? <laughs> I don't know what to tell you guys. If we don't get some sort of re re relief rally, I don't know what to tell you guys. We're gonna then go lower. Uh, but more important part is guys, be prepared for it, right? Be especially for the active traders, be prepared for it. There's absolutely no reason to think that if we get a, a week open, the last thing you wanna do is keep shorting into the hole, shorting to the hole, and if you are part of the webinar, or an old school trader, you kind of know what the, what the word shorting into the hole means. It's a no-no, right? So we don't want to short into hole. We do, do not want to short into weakness. Uh, our value plays continue to be if the market opens up, a reversal, previous range lows, and the one aspect of it for a potential re reversal, again, like I talked about a couple of minutes ago, we are looking for that washout, red to green, and everything grows, goes green uh, at the same time. So going into uh, next week, I am very, very, um, I am very aware for a potential reversal back to the upside. So I don't want to get too aggressive, especially on Monday, uh, where you kind of want to let the noise die out a little bit and see how it goes. So really aggressive week. If we've been watching the market, uh, if you've been watching this broadcast, right, for the last, you know, three, four days, you know, it's been sell bias. We've been talking about channel after channel after channel. Uh, we talked about Tesla and NVIDIA and Apple and NET and all these stocks. And again, these stocks are taking down channels and they start continuing to, to flow uh, right after the previous day's channel. And it turned out to be a pretty solid week. If you trade uh, both sides of the market, you kind of do appreciate uh, how both sides work. Again, I think if you're an active trader, or um, an aspiring active trader. Again, I've, I've been saying this for years. You really need to uh, trade both sides of the market. You can't fall in love with a stock. You can't fall in love with a side. You have to be, you know, you have to be optimistic that both sides of the market does work. That gravity is real. Um, and, and there's gonna be times that the market is going to put you in a situation that you feel helpless. And this is why it's so important to trade both sides of the market so you don't feel helpless. You have. Uh, and understanding that stocks do go up, stocks do go down, and sometimes they go down a little bit more aggressively than you'd hope for. And this is why it's super important to kind of get it, right? And you know, God gave you two hands, two eyes, two ears, right? Trade both sides of the market. So let's talk about today, a uh, very, very aggressive 
Uh, Friday, uh, Tesla continues to be just phenomenal. You know, you had a big run up uh, this week on Tesla, and then they started losing channels. Uh, yesterday, it lost that 299 level, right? Started to, to, to crash down. Uh, today, here's your pivot, right? Uh, 250, 280, 50 is rising daily support. If it builds below, it can flush. Uh, here is Tesla, great move. I mean, he's just been a great trader, uh, long and short. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal trader. So here is the 280.50 area here. It lost it, it went straight down, uh, all the way down to the 272 level. Uh, you got a, a lot of put buying, uh, a lot of put buying today to kind of end the week. Didn't really see, this is kind of why I still think that there's, there could be a reversal at some point next week. You really didn't see going into next week, you really didn't see like 265, 250 puts. And normally if a stock market continues to go in one direction, you would have a lot of institutional money flow anticipation of a bigger move. But you can see here, you had a move here from 314 to 272 in three days. Again, everything needs a little bit of a breather. So that's kind of the thinking going into next week. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of a relief rally. Uh, Airbnb uh, Thursday got murdered 112.36. Uh, if it builds below, it can flush. Uh, I went all the way down to $100.70 and lost that $100.70, traded down to 99 and change. Uh, Nvidia, there was a sneaky pivot around that uh, 124 level, didn't quite get down to the 122. Uh, Apple, uh, 150.80s, if it builds below, it can flush. Here was Apple. Right, here was Apple, uh, right? So it took down that 150 80s level, went all the way down to uh, 148 50s. And again, look how it just stopped right right above uh, the channel's low. So it's gonna, be so, it's gonna be very, very interesting, putting a little baby little hammer, just like the way the NASDAQ did, just like the way the S&P 500 did. This is kind of what we continue to talk about. Uh, NET 56 builds below, it can flush. Here was NET. Uh, took out the 56, went all the way down to 53. Nice move there. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what else. Uh, Chewy, 31.20 for builds below can flush. Not a big move on Chewy. Uh, here is Chewy, 31.20. If it builds below can flush, went down to 30. Only like a dollar move. But again, you can see the bounce here, putting in a hammer. Again, kind of shows you, I think there's a shot that we get a reversal. In the video here is we talk about 124, went down to like 122 and change. And that's it, that's it. So that's it, guys. So closing off the week, uh, nothing really to complain about. If you're in the webinar, uh, if you're in the webinar, you kind of know the importance of technical analysis it has nothing to do with me, okay? I am a loser, I'm an idiot, I'm a moron. But you know what's constant? Except for that, the technical analysis works. And that's the same driving force that you're gonna have the common denominator in a bull and a bear market. Guys, God bless everybody. Stay healthy, stay happy, and most important thing is stay in business. God bless, guys. I'll see you all next week.